Greetings and welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. So this is another episode in our pizza series. Today we're going to tackle New York pizza. So what is special about New York pizza? It's thin. The dough is crispy but chewy. Uh, the sauce is thick but lightly applied. And then the blend of cheeses gives you this orange layer of oils that are on the pizza. So here is our take on the New York style pizza. You can see in front of me that I have four dough balls here ready to go. Well, first we have to go back in time, 48 hours to when Char prepared this dough. <music> because tea. tea, tea is life. Hi, welcome back to Galley of the Sun. So Mike has me doing his pizza dough because um, I guess he considers me the baker. <laughs> so we're going to be doing the next one up is a New York style pizza. So we're going to make some pizza dough. We're going to start off with one teaspoon of active dry yeast. Put it into your mixer bowl over here. Let me get this over here. Okay, still plugged in. That didn't sound right. Um, one teaspoon of sugar. Nope. Aha, sugar. Thank you. Mike had this all set up for me because I had to run to the store. Um, a quarter cup of warm water. I am going to get out a thermometer because your water should usually be between 105 and about 115 no hotter than that and that puts us right at about 105 which is a good temperature because yeast needs it warm but not too warm and we're gonna put that in there and I'm just gonna give that a little stir get that all going and then we're gonna let that bloom and if anybody knows what what letting your yeast bloom is is you will notice that it will get kind of um, kind of a bubbly foamy kind of top on it once it's done but we do have to stir this up a little bit with the sugar and the warm water so that it has a chance to activate the yeast because that's what the blooming does it's it's let it is giving a chance for that yeast to activate and start working on that sugar so that we get a nice elastic pizza dough. Or if you're doing bread, you get an elastic bread, that sort of thing, unless you're like doing a quick bread. So there it is, just blended. And then we're gonna let this sit for about five minutes or so, five, 10 minutes and let it bloom. And it's okay if it's like 10 minutes cause you're doing something else to let it bloom, that is perfectly okay. The other things we have on hand to make this is some more water. We're going to have um, a tablespoon of sugar, a tablespoon of salt. Let me move that water out of the way. We're going to have some olive oil, about a quarter cup. Now, this recipe says to split it into fours. And so I have four bowls here because I know that they're not going to be any bigger than this. They're going to be small, but they need to be well oiled. And we'll go into that when I split these up and put them in here. I've got the dough hook on my mixer so that it will do all the kneading for me and I don't have to do any of the kneading, which is great. <laughs> I also have five cups of bread flour. There are four here and one here. Now I, I do have my bag of bread flour out in case I need to use any more bread flour because if it starts to look st too sticky, then you just kind of add a little bit until it doesn't look sticky anymore. Um, so we're going to be back in about five, 10 minutes and let that bloom. I'll show you what that looks like when we, when it's bloomed and then we'll get going on the rest of this. Okay. So it's been about five to 10 minutes. Mike is getting a picture of this so you can see what a bloom looks like. You see, it looks all nice and kind of frothy, um, almost like a head of, of a nice dark stout beer. That's kind of what this looks like. And there we go. So the rest of this is just really easy. The rest of this is just, we add in the rest of the ingredients. So I'm gonna throw in the sugar and I'm gonna throw in the salt directly into there. 
okay? It asks for two cups of warm water. I'm going to do a half cup from here and a half cup from the spigot because that's still steaming a lot. Reason I do the wet stuff first, when I throw the flour in, it'll just, to me, it seems to mix better. The two cups water, quarter cup of olive oil. Now, we don't pour this out first just because this goes all the way to the rim. We didn't want it spilling everywhere and creating an oily mess. And I strongly suggest that if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer like this, that you get one, get the biggest one you can. This is the largest one. It's the Professional Series. Now, to tell you how much I love my mixer, <laughs> this mixer is just over 26 years old. I've had it serviced once. It cost me $130. They took it apart, cleaned it, re-greased it, did the, the gear in here, $130. 26 years old. This thing's amazing. Got all of the wet in there plus the, the two small of the salt and the sugar. I'm going to pull this up and we're going to start with the one cup and, and you start on low, kind of just like a stir as you start to get this in there. Now you have the guard that comes with this and you have the pouring spout that comes with this. I rarely, if ever, use either of those. I think my pouring spout may have broken because it was plastic, but I still have the guard. I don't really use those much unless I'm doing something like powdered sugar wise. There is five cups of flour in there. I have it on stir, just kind of getting everything in there. I'm moving it up a little bit. Getting things blended in there. You can see a dough is starting to form. It's still kind of craggy and, and stuff, but it's starting to form. I'm going to turn it up a little bit higher. Oh, maybe not quite that high. There we go. And you see that I started off slowly so that I don't have flour going everywhere. And Mike is over here doing a great job of getting in here and looking at the dough here. But you can see it's starting to come together. And I don't think I'm going to have to add any more flour to it. Um, but we're going to let this sit and knead down because we need a smooth ball to form on this. And it's starting to get there. We're almost there at that smooth ball stage. Yeah, there we go. And I didn't need to add any more flour or any more water. And the dough hook came out nice and clean. With this, we're just going to turn it out. We need to well oil each one of these bowls. So we're just going to come in here. We're going to go like this. Now I just use my fingers and I just oil the bowl really good. We're going to cover each one of these with saran wrap because with this particular um, dough, it's going to actually proof in the refrigerator overnight. 12 to 24 hours, it says. 24 hours is, or at least 24 hours and up to a week. So we've got quite a bit of time left on this. And with the when we make dinner, it's probably not going to be 12 or 24 hours. It's probably going to be closer to like 18 but it should still turn out just fine. And each one of the balls that I'm gonna put in these is gonna, should make, should, we'll say should. <laughs> I'm not an expert person with rolling out dough um, for pizzas and stuff, but it should make four 12 inch pizzas in the New York style, which is a nice thin, good crust, so. We're just gonna get these oiled well, just like it says. Okay, now I'm gonna pull this out. And you know, you'll notice that the dough is warm. We're gonna set that aside over here. Thank you, Mike. The dough is actually gonna set about 48 hours because oh. today is Wednesday. Oh, that's right. The day before Thanksgiving, and we're having this on Friday. So yeah, it's gonna sit a long time. So I, see, this is my bad. So. I'm just trying to cut this into four even sections. So yeah, it'll sit a long, long enough time. Here I am thinking it's the day before and we're having it in. And all I'm doing is I'm just wrapping these around until I have nice little balls made. And then we're just gonna set them in. And then I'm gonna get saran wrap 
and we're going to cover these and then these are going in the fridge so you can't get much easier dough than that and then we'll be back on friday and show you how these come out get our new york style pizza made so i'll see you back on friday So here we are on pizza day. What do I have left to do? Well, I need to get my cheese blend together. I need to get my Italian sausage browned because you've seen enough of our videos. We love the Italian sausage. So it's gonna be on every one of our pizzas. Uh, and I need to get the sauce made. So what I have here is a 28 ounce can of whole San Marzano tomatoes. So I'm gonna put this into this pitcher I'm already prepared for disaster, got the apron on today. Flour, sauce, yeah, something's gonna happen. There's a debate out there about sauce for New York style pizza. A lot of purists say you gotta go raw. Uh, other people say you gotta cook it. Trying them both, really, I like the cooked kind better for New York style pizza. Now, as I said before, we want it thick, but we're gonna thinly apply it. Well, to get it thick, we're gonna have to simmer it for a while to get a lot of that liquid off of it. So I'm starting about two hours before it's pizza time. Uh, into this pitcher is gonna go two smashed garlic cloves and a tablespoon of minced oregano, a tablespoon of minced garlic. Now we're gonna take our immersion blender and get that all mixed up real well. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, we're gonna go over to the stove and instead of using a saucepan, I'm gonna use a skillet, which gives me more surface area, more room for that water to evaporate off to give us our thicker sauce that we're looking for. So to get this sauce going, we're gonna fire up some medium high heat. We're gonna get a quarter cup of olive oil into our pan. There we go. Into that goes our tomato, garlic, basil, oregano mixture. A teaspoon of salt a teaspoon of sugar, a pinch of red chili flakes. Now, whenever I use these, I like to put them into my, the palm of my hand first and then sort of press down on them. What that's gonna do is break them apart there and release their oils. Just little, little pops you can feel happening there. Okay, that goes in. And to assist us in thickening this, uh, I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons of concentrated tomato paste. Which is about all that's left in this tube. We're gonna get that all mixed together. Now it's pretty easy. Bring it to a simmer, stir it occasionally, let it simmer there for about 25 to 30 minutes until you can drape your spoon across the skillet and you'll see the bottom of the skillet before the sauce comes back in and covers it. The next must for a New York style pizza is at about an hour before you're ready to cook your pizzas, you're going to get your pizza stone in your oven and then set your oven on the max temperature and we're gonna let that pizza stone warm up for an entire hour before we put the first pizza on there. And actually, let's plan for success. We're gonna be putting the pizzas on here with a peel. This has these handles here, so we want those out of our way so we can go just straight in and get our pizza on there. Mine goes all the way to 550 degrees. That's what we're going for. Now to make our cheese mixture. So, I have a couple of eight ounce packages here of low moisture, part skim mozzarella, and that's already shredded for me. So that goes into the bowl. And 
and I have a pound of full fat mozzarella here. That we're gonna have to shred our own. Mmm. Don't shred the label. No bueno. as far as I care to go down before losing skin. Now we get that all mixed together, get it as even as we can with the full fat and the part skim. Okay, so as I add my Italian sausage to the skillet, what I'm gonna do is try and uh, break off some pieces here and just put a bunch of big chunks in there. That way, once they're cooked, I'll have big chunks of Italian sausage all over the pizza. Normally, we just put this in here, uh, cook it like you would cook any kind of ground meat, uh, breaking it up with your spoon as you go along. Well, I would like some big chunks of Italian sausage on this pizza, so I'm gonna break them up, put them in here. So I've given myself plenty of time to get this done. So my strategy is I'm gonna go at a pretty low heat and just make sure when I stir, I'm being very, very gentle with those globs of sauce. So you're gonna form your dough into the shape that you want and then put it on the peel. So you wanna minimize the time that it's sitting on the peel with that sauce on it, getting that crust damp before you're getting into the oven. So I wanna be able to work fast. So I'm gonna take a baking sheet here and set out all of my fresh mozzarella now what I'm gonna to wanna to do, I'm gonna crumble this onto my pizzas, but these slices certainly get me halfway there. So I wanna be able to just grab a few slices, crumble it, get that pizza together and go. So, status report. Sauce is simmering away, almost to the thickness that I want it. Sausage is cooking nice and slow, being careful not to break up those chunks that we made. The cheese blend is together. The dough is out coming to room temperature. The oven's preheating with the pizza stone in it. Uh, our fresh mozzarella is already prepared for us over here. Gonna make it easy to put on. Life is good. Time for a brown sugar bourbon break. Mm. Incredible. Mm. If you've watched any of our other videos, you know that Italian sausage is sausage that we made here at the Galley of the Sun. Check out that episode. Uh, now what we're in this lull right now, it's a great time to tell you that there's a subscribe button. If you hit that subscribe button, you'll know when every one of our videos gets released. We typically release them on Monday and Thursday mornings at eight o'clock Mountain Standard Time, but we also release bonus videos throughout the entire week. So that subscribe button is gonna help you out. If you like what you're seeing, hit that like button. And what really helps us get out to more people are the comments you leave. Not only are we interested, what is your favorite type of pizza? How do you do your pizza different than us? Uh, also, your requests. We have done several viewer requests and we're happy to do more. So put that down in the comments. All right, so the sausage is looking good. I'm gonna put that in a strainer over a bowl, get that drained out, because we definitely don't want that crust to get too soggy before it hits that 550 degree pizza stone. All right, here's what I did when my audio was off. So now it's time to make the pizza. So I've taken the dough out of the paper dish that uh, Char made earlier two days ago. I dusted the top with flour, turned it over into a floured surface, floured the other side where all the oil had pooled. Uh, now, the first thing we're going to do is form the crust. So you can see that I have a rim there. Now we're trying to make 12 inch pizzas. So the first step is to get a 10 inch pizza. I know that sounds weird, but it's all going to work. Okay unless it doesn't, but it probably will. Maybe? Okay, I saw it on YouTube, it has to work. So, 
we're going around here. We have our rim formed for the edge. Now I'm going to grab it and I'm going to start pulling as I rotate the pizza and make this closer to a 10 inch pizza. Remember, we want that crust thin. We want to be careful and not tear it. Rotate, pull, rotate, pull until I have a nice round 10 inch pizza. It's taking a little bit of time, but it's coming along. Uh, I have no hint of thin areas or any worry of tears right now. Famous last words I know. I was a little timid before with uh, my poles, but uh, I'm feeling more and more confident as we go around here. So pulling just a little bit harder. Okay, make sure we got that lip again, going all the way around it. Okay, so now I'm gonna get a little bit of flour on our peel here. Yeah, Char had set me out some cornmeal. I'm gonna try and go without it. I think I can make this happen. I think I know what I'm doing. Actually, that peel is not big enough for what I need to do. Okay, so we'll go with this one. Okay, so let's get that layer of sauce on there. So we're making four pizzas, so I can use about a quarter of this sauce. See, public math, very good at it, very good. Remember New York style pizza, you don't want that sauce too thick. Okay, that's done. Gonna hit it with our magic cheese, which is a mixture of ground Parmesan, Romano, Asiago, and Mistra. Okay, we got that. Now we're going to hit it with about half of the cheese we're gonna put on it. Then we're gonna hit it with about a quarter of our Italian sausage. And look at that, those big chunks that we tore off earlier came out fine. What's a pizza without pepperoni? It's freaking cheese bread is what it is, okay? People, understand this, you gotta have meat. Got to have meat. So, we'll get our pepperoni on there. I am a little passionate about that. Okay, we've got a good number of pepperonis on there. Now we're going to hit it with the other part of our cheese. Okay, now we're going to tear up a couple of these fresh mozzarella slices all right and then a secret for new york style pizza we're going to get a pinch of salt and pepper over the top of that now we need we're going to use the weight of those toppings to help us make this pizza a 12 inch pizza the toppings weighed it down, allowed me to make that a bit bigger. So now we go into the oven. I'm going, what I'm trying to do is just get maybe an inch or two of the end of this onto the pizza stone. That thing's already up to 550 degrees. It's gonna grab a hold of it, and then we'll just pull the peel back and we'll be fine. Okay, you got me? Okay, here we go. There we go. Had to give it a little assist with another peel, but that's a great trick there. If you need to do it, have that second peel on hand. That made it very easy. All right, we're well into pizza production. I've got more to make, but one is done. 
and you saw the pictures of it, I gotta try it. So here we go. The crust is absolutely perfect. And from that mixture of the cheeses, we've got that orange layer of the oils on there, just like we were looking for. Turned out great. Well, I hope you like what you saw here, and I hope you give this a try, because this is definitely worth it. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. Thank you.